X-Men 97 showrunner confirms Disney Plus series will portray Morph as non-binary. So, Gray, this is the original Morph in the in, in the show. He was in episode one. And uh, he was actually uh, integral to the, the story because um, I believe uh, he, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he died. If I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Well, let's continue. Let's see. In the first confirmed change being made to the fan favorite incarnation of the Mar Marvel's merry band of mutants, X Men 97 showrunner ba uh, Bao Bao De Mayo, uh, Bo De Mayo uh, has revealed that unlike the original series, the upcoming revival will portray the mutant shapeshifter Morph as non binary, as a non binary individual. So the thing is that that's fucking crazy. Like, I, I thought he was Chinese. I'm not sure if he is. But the thing is, um, I don't think they even knew what non-binary was back in 97. Because this is supposed to be set in 97. Gray, how do you feel? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Disney doing their Disney thing. It's like, we already know this was going to happen. Given we were right with right, uh, Pedro Pascal, right? Being a strong contender. Contender being Reed Richards and Fantastic Four. Mm -hmm. So... We already know they're gonna probably do the same thing there. So what's what what makes X Men different? And they'll leave it as is or respect the source material. Uh no, no uh yeah, we're gonna need some major. Pe Bob Iger needs to go, and all of his goons need to go, if we want the, um these IPs to return back to their to the good old days and be good again. That's that's the only way. It's like you cannot rationalize with these people. They're just it, Bob Bob Iger is in there to to get get more money for Disney and to look good before he retires. And all the wokies just want to yeah do woke stuff. Yep. So now let's see. Uh, this change was first confirmed by the Mail during a series of centric interview given to Empire Magazine for their April uh, April twenty twenty four issue. Providing brief teases into the approach of the series took in writing from uh, writing each of the series' principal mutant castmates when it comes to Morph. The showrunner confirmed to Empire, ha uh, as recapped by the outlet's Helen O'Hara, that this is a lighter take on the character who is non-binary and has an interesting buddy relationship with Wolverine. They're going to be fucking. Wolverine oh, is going to be fucked. Uh, I have a feeling Wolverine is not going to be into Jean Grey anymore because according to what I saw, Jean Grey is pregnant. And so Wolverine is going to want uh, morph to morph into Jean Grey. They're going to have sex. And then during sex, he's going to morph back into himself. He's like, you're gay, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, fuck. <laughs> I don't. Okay, yeah. So, but I have a feel if they have a buddy relationship, inter interesting buddy relationship, are they gonna make Wolverine one of the fucking most masculine characters in X Men? Fucking bisexual. Yeah. Like what the what the fuck, yeah, yeah, man? Yeah, yeah. As much as you you were joking a while earlier, but I think it's not far off from what, what they will do. I I think it's something that they they can and will do. Actually, yeah. Oh like, man, they're, they're, people they're gonna in the pull, chat are mad. It's they're like, gonna stop pull it. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna pull an Ultiman FF16 where he he's he swapped from Benedict to the dude. <laughs> oh my god, dude. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so so we have uh, Cycl so we have Gambito, uh, Gambit with Rogue, and don't even get me started with Rogue and what they did to her. Uh, we have Jubilee, we have Storm, we have Wolverine, Beast, Morph, and Bishop. So uh, a lot a lot of people had issues with the Mohawk. Uh, I don't really care about the Mohawk. The Mohawk is fine. I believe she has Mohawk in many other iterations of her in the comics. I want her to get married with T'Challa. And then, like I said before, and then um, what's it called again? Uh, because in the comic book, uh, T'Challa divorces her in a fucking savage way. Like I mentioned before, is like uh, he's like, yeah. So according to the High Council, um, they said that we're going to be getting a divorce. And he's like, she's like, what? We're getting a divorce? Yeah. So according to the High Council, you need to leave Wakanda. And it's like, but you're the High Council. He's like, I know. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's, it's pretty fucking funny. But uh, yeah, <clears throat> but according to what I heard, um, I'm not sure if, if this is true. Uh, they they don't they look like themselves, but they don't look like themselves. I think um, they change a lot of stuff. Of course, the art style is completely is completely re uh, I guess redone. Uh, the, they, like Beast looks like Beast, Wolverine looks like Wolverine. The characters do sort of look like themselves. Uh, but yeah, but according to what I heard, Cyclops is going to be relatively removed since he's the leader. But Jean Grey is pregnant, so he has to sort of be there all the time. So the next person in charge, that I believe they're going to be making it Storm. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's I, a I Disney thing to do. It's it's a Disney thing to do for sure. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, she can't marry Black Panther. She's a peasant, true and real. But uh, let's see. Um, unsurprisingly, uh, this presents a significant change to the character morph, uh, both as originally portrayed in the original Marvel comics and in the original X Men's animated series. Uh, born Kevin Sidney, the mutant known as Morph, as his name in- implies, possesses the mutant uh, mutant gift of cellular level shape shifting. Uh, though depicted as through and through a villain in the comic book from on the small screen, Morph was initially introduced as a proper member of the X-Men in a team's pilot episode, Night of the Sentinels, which is actually, I actually rewatched uh, several episodes of it. It, was, it actually still really holds up. Uh, before being killed in the same episode by a surprise attack that carried out by the group of Sentinels. Yeah, he died. And that basically gave uh, the X-Men motivation to go after like the Sentinels and shit like that, So, which is actually pretty crazy. But typical comic book fashion, Morph Deaths proves to be anything but as the ma- uh, as the mutant is later revealed not to only to be res- uh, rescued from the attack by none other than Mr. Sinister, but also had an evil person- uh, personality planted with him by the villain, which is later on ha- uh, happening, of course. Uh, yeah, he basically becomes a bad guy. Following a brief stint as a mind-controlled pawn of the leather-clad Englishman, Morph is eventually rescued by his former teammates, and brought back to the x fold even going on to play a major role in the eventual destruction of the Sentinel production, ma- uh, producing Master Mold. So, now let's go f- move further down. Uh, I I would say uh, the non-binary thing is, is a big issue. The reason why is um, because it doesn't make sense for you to have that in 97. But, like you said, Gray, uh, Dis- uh, Disney is going to Disney. So uh, let's go ahead and finish this. Let's see. After all, as stated by DeMeo during a 2023 Marvel live stream event regarding the series, one of his goals with X-Men 97 was, quote, to just get this right and really drill down to what I think, what I think the X-Men's always going to be about, which is, you know, we talk about uh, the dream is social acceptance and it's social justice. Uh, what? How, how do you feel about this? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna. It's gonna be a TV show or a movie. TV show. TV show, right? A- anim- yeah. A- yeah, animated. Yeah, it's yeah. We can only hope. What what is it um, expected to release? I is think there March. Project? I think I think it's oh. next month. Oh, already? Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. March. Yeah, yeah. yeah, March twentieth, right here. Oh. Oh, okay, so yeah, we're gonna have to watch it. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it, it, it could uh, be good. It, it could surprise us and be really, really good. Yeah, I, again, uh, because we got a lot of backlash from the our take on Avatar. Oh, you didn't watch Avatar. Your your, your takes are not. Uh, we can't take your. Uh, we can't take you seriously because you didn't watch. Okay, we, we, I said, I like I said, it could be good. We could be. It could be good. We could be wrong. We'd be glad to be wrong. But again, yeah. given how much this wokeness disaster has permeated throughout the the industry. Is it really so bad to have a take like that? Like, is it really so terrible to have a take that, yeah, they're going to butcher this show. Uh, Like, like what they did to so many others already. It's like the people, the, the fan base at Avatar, I'm not sure if they're, they're not familiar with what's going on, but yeah, Avatar could be next for all we know. Avatar, it's going to premiere very soon. Actually. It's like, yeah, it's um, premiering next week. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's we have to watch that one too. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'm gonna stick it to them. If if they really butchered that, soccer, right? Not soca. Soca. 
Yeah, soccer. Like yeah. They, they like they like to point out if they butcher a story, like I want to see them back and commenting on our segment if we talk about it. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, it's not looking good given Disney's management and given mm. um their track record. But maybe, maybe. But I, for me, I'm. It's unlikely because like Netflix. Yeah, you can say that maybe it could be um it could be good because they tend to hit and miss. It it depends on the studio they hire for that project if they're woke or not. But for Disney, yeah. every everybody's practically everybody's woke. So I am not. I'm leaning towards not being hopeful. Yeah. So now um going going to over here. Let me let me finish this uh, quote. Let me see. I think that we can uh, can sometimes make certain people feel alienated. For me. Uh, it's always going to come back to I think the X Men and what we're going to uh, be trying to do to the series is talking about the power of empathy and how it can kind of heal these wounds that turn people against each other. Think uh, that things like racism and bigotry don't uh, just uh, sorry don't just exist. There's a reason behind it, and uh, that empathy can kind of help us connect and build those bridges where we can actually say, "Hey, we are all different." But we have all of these little things that still connect us, uh, which is which is fine, okay. But a lot of people are, are saying, "What do you mean woke? X Men has always been woke. It's been woke since the fucking beginning of time. Like what the fuck, man?" So I'm like, uh, "Is that true though? Is that actually true, right?" So um, so if like over here it says um, this comes to us from Josiah, uh, Josiah rises. Shout out to Josiah. Um, I'm gonna share the screen right over here. And it says a uh, morph becoming non-binary non-binary was confirmed by showrunner uh Bo DeMeo when the show was first revealed. Disney can't help but make everything woke and gay. So basically, it was confirmed right over here. Let's see, the morph is already confirmed to re uh, return to the series. The character was created specifically for the show by Lou Walt and Houston to kill and off in the first infamous episode, Night in the Sentinels. Originally, the role was meant for Thunderbird, but it was decided in the last hour to create a new unfamiliar character to kill off at the start to prove that stakes were high and emotional impact the team faced at the loss of a teammate. Due to his popularity in the focus groups, the writers decided to bring them back as a surprise for season two, later redeeming himself, but they're going to make him non-binary and they sort of made him sort of like a gray man, a gray person and stuff like that. With I, I don't know what it is. There's Cable, Bishop, and OG Bishop. But uh, based off of that, it's like, oh, well, uh, X-Men has always been woke. Uh, 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 uh. And then right over here, this is from Comics Division. Shout, shout out to Comics Division. We're going to have him on in the future. Uh, replying to this person, Stan Lee deliberately based Professor X and Magneto on Martin Luther King and Malcolm X. The X-Men are supposed to be woke. That is literally the whole point. Now, he commented and said, there are interviews with Stan Lee where he says the exact opposite of this myth. And I brought proof. Now, let's go ahead. This is a two-minute video from the late and great Stan Lee. Let's see what he has to say. I had already done Spider-Man with the Hulk and Fantastic Four. And my publisher said, give me another book, Stan. We're going strong. Let's do some more. Well, in order to get a new superhero, you have to think of what his or her power is, that's not too hard. But you have to figure out how did they get that power. And that's a little difficult. I can't have them all be bitten by radioactive <laughs> spiders. So I had already given them their powers. And then it hit me. What if they're mutants? What if they were born that way? I thought that was brilliant. And I ran into my publisher and I told him about the characters. And I said, we'll make them mutants and we'll call the book The Mutants. And he said, no, Stan, that'll, that's no good because our readers wouldn't know what a mutant is. And I said, you don't have enough respect for our readers. They will know or else they'll learn by reading the story. He said, no, I don't like the name The Mutants. So I had to think of something else because he was the boss. So I thought after a while, each of them has an extra power. Maybe I'll call them the X-Men. That could sound kind of dramatic. So I ran back to him and I said, okay, how about if we call them the X-Men? And he said, oh, that's great. And as I walked out of his office, I thought, if a reader wouldn't know what a mutant is, how will he know what an X-Man is? But I wasn't about to make an issue of it. I had my <laughs> title and that's why the leader, I called him Professor Xavier because it began with an X 
and that tied in with the X-Men and so forth. I'm now, gonna- now I'm going to pause over here is because this this part is very important when he talks about like, um, you know, well, X-Men is supposed to be woke and shit like that. So let's see what he has to say. Always tried to do our stories so that it didn't matter if you were of the white race, the black race, the brown race or whatever. So social issues, I try to get in in the background or underlaying a plot, but never to the point of letting it interfere with the story or hitting the reader over the head. Boom. There it is. Right. It should not be at front and center of the story. Right. And the thing is that we do have another person that I do want to bring up. This is this this is a rather long video, but I do want to when I say long, it's like 10 minutes. It's not it's it's rather it's rather long, but it comes from, from a person who is uh pretty good and has probably one of the highest knowledge of comic books in at least in our sphere, like like for YouTubers and stuff like that. And it's no other than Eric July. So Eric July has his own comic book and stuff like he started his own comic book company. And this comes to us, I believe it's like four years ago, right? This is four years ago. The one with uh, Stan Lee, that was six years ago. So let's go ahead and watch the Eric July one. So this one is rather interesting as well. It talks to us about the uh, X-Men and the so- social justice myth. That's so loud. It is not a secret that the advocates of Audio's social good. justice when it comes to comics are very- A little louder, a little louder. They are leeches that exist to only hijack subcultures yeah, and fandom. Okay. And honestly, they do a great job of this. But when it comes to the old social justice has always been a part of comics thing, the go-to cliche that they use is referencing the X-Men as an example of this. There are usually two claims that are often misunderstood, very misunderstood, surrounding this idea. One, they say that the X-Men was flat out created to be social justice, and two, the Magneto and Professor X, that whole conflict, they were created to represent MLK and Malcolm X. Both of these are either partially false or entirely false, depending on the narrative. Notice, these claims are hardly ever backed up with anything other than like some headline of an article. First and foremost, no, Stan Lee did not create Magneto and Professor X with the sole intent of having them be analogies for MLK and Malcolm X. They weren't even specifically created to represent the civil rights era. If you read the X-Men when it first came out, it's not even remotely analogous to the civil rights era. So it makes sense as to why Stan Lee said in an interview that the metaphor was given to him more so as a gift. It like fell in his lap. He didn't specifically create it and he didn't create the comic to represent the civil rights era. It was more of a case that there happened to be a metaphor at the time that could really make the narrative more relatable he even yeah so basically a lot of the the people who like i think i guess the woke people or people who are trying to relate it to the civil rights era basically are mis misinterpreting or misusing what the original like st- like the original message that stanley wanted to do right so uh yeah sorry sorry I, i'm gonna i'm gonna continue let, let him talk yeah, yeah. even admits that any sort of portrayal in terms of magneto being malcolm and professor x being like mlk was something that was done unconsciously he literally says that himself he didn't try to do it this makes sense again because magneto in his first appearances was just a regular cutthroat sort of villain professor x and the x-men sort of stood in his way he was a supremacist in a sense. He had intentions on ruling the world and the lesser humans, not any sort of common goal with Professor X. Don't take my word for anything. Just go read the comics uh, starting in 1963 up until really the damn 80s. To say that they were specifically created to be metaphors uh, for the civil rights era is not only lazy, it's flat out and verifiably false. It wasn't until the 80s when Magneto became more of a villain that people sort of tried to sympathize with. um, And he had that past intertwined with Professor X. That was actually a bit of a retcon. So if the SJWs read comics, which they don't, (laughs) they'd understand this. Chris Claremont's era of X-Men is way more analogous uh, to that era, but even that isn't specifically referenced to the civil rights era. Again, that's something that he clearly admits in interviews. He said that the metaphors he thought about 
were along the lines of begin and the Israeli dichotomy, not the civil rights dichotomy. Again, something else he admitted in interviews. So factually speaking, not opinion. The X-Men were not created to represent the civil rights era by way of Stan Lee and even the retcon of X and Magneto during Claremont's run, they weren't created as such. Now that this is out the way, it is no secret that the X-Men have had stories created around them that can absolutely be interpreted in multiple ways. That's what good writers are able to do. It's also not a secret that mutants have been disenfranchised at times. X-Men have been the enemy of not only the standard villains, but governments and the citizens among them, though not always. This conflict has made for some very classic storylines and became the identity of the X-Men. The problem is that the social justice advocates conflate this with social justice. This is why I think that they are projecting when they say things like, Everyone you dislike is a social justice warrior, according to you. No, 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 no. I think that everything that you do like is something that you like to claim is related to social justice. Anybody with half a brain, however, understands that heroes being disenfranchised or aliens or types of people being enfranchised uh, and made to be the enemies of others because they are different is not exclusive to social justice. In fact, I'd argue that just about every single mainstream comic book character has had some sort of conflict where they have people uh, or types of people that are disliking them because of what they are. This isn't even exclusive to the X-Men or mutants. This is also a self-defeating point because Malcolm X was not an advocate of what you guys consider to be social justice. Ironically enough, he's one of the most misunderstood civil rights figures as people just think that he was simply a more militant MLK. He wasn't as peaceful. He was willing to fight back. This is objectively false. I have a video going through some of Malcolm's ideals, uh, and I'll link that in the description. But Brother Malcolm X and the MLK were ideologically, fundamentally opposed. They weren't friends. They weren't even former friends like X and Magneto were after the retcons. And the social justice advocates that advocate diversity and inclusion, he wasn't for diversity and inclusion. He damn sure wasn't an integrationist like MLK was. The only similarity they shared is that they both recognized that black people were getting the crap in of the stick. Malcolm X, however, wasn't trying to do sit-ins or force himself into white businesses or championing the Civil Rights Act or anything like that. Nor was he trying to force white people to accept him. He, in fact, wanted blacks to be self-sufficient, and he knew that the Civil Rights Act was sort of a joke, and the politicians were just using black people to sort of uh, advance their power. But he wasn't a supremacist either, like folks on the other side tried to paint him as, especially post-Mecca. This wasn't a case of two people with the same end game and different tactics. This was two individuals on completely opposite ends in terms of end game. So all in all, this is nothing but revisionist history by way of the social justice advocates who simply want to excuse the comic book hijack and bad writing. X-Men doesn't even prove your point as they aren't on the nose like many writers are now. They had stories that were up for different interpretations um, in terms of social reference and relevance. This is unlike Captain Marvel writers telling you straight up in the dialogue that they aren't losing reporters to seven foot misogynists. That's actually in the dialogue. <laughs> this is why you're trying to excuse your nonsense by referencing the X-Men as a self-detonating point, because those comics aren't written like the nonsense that we see today. So you're wrong on multiple fronts. Those X-Men comics could be metaphors for a multitude of different things. Being disenfranchised is not exclusive to social justice. Neither is fighting against bigotry or having people dislike you because of who you are. It's not a difficult thing to do. You can relate to disenfranchised people or people being treated unfairly while also recognizing that social justice is stupid. And I'm not even saying that Stan Lee hated social justice or was an anti-social justice advocate. I'm not even saying that the X-Man was anti-social justice. I'm not even saying that you couldn't find similarities between movements or minority groups and X-Men in terms of their experience. Absolutely, you can find those similarities with conflicts such as racism. I'm saying that to refer to that and say that it was created to be representative of the civil rights era is simply not true. And to try to pin the fact that mutants are minorities is proof that it's social justice. It's both intellectually lazy and dishonest. You as a cornball social justice advocate do not get to claim monopoly on having to deal with or being against things such as folks that are being disenfranchised or not being liked because of who they are. 
This is something that many individuals of different political and social political backgrounds can recognize or experience or relate to, including folks like myself, which sees social justice as the gimmick that it is in concept because there is no such thing as social justice. There's only justice. These SJWs just want credit for something and excuses for continuing to ruin characters in books that they don't even read. Y'all aren't even <laughs> inclusive. All that kumbaya, love everybody has an asterisk next to it that says we only love you if you agree with us. As soon as folks like my black ass says something that is against the narrative, trust me, y'all are quick to sling out those racist connotations because well i don't behave like sjw's think black people should behave you motherfuckers ain't special <laughs> and you're raging hypocrites and while that may be uh, a little bit of my opinion what isn't my opinion is that some of you are just flat out lying about the history of the x-men man and before this video ends man that's uh well said well said yeah shout out to young ripper eric july man that that's that's four years ago, and it still has relevance to today, based off of like what he's saying. And I'm glad that he started his own, uh, what's it called again, his own uh, uh, comic book company and his own studio, which is pretty damn cool. But yeah, shout out to him. I already, I don't, I, yeah, I kind of like that video. But yeah, um, it's um, it's pretty crazy how like a lot of people who are basically online saying that how it oh it it is supposed to be woke. It is supposed to be this way. Um, you guys are just mad or some other bullshit, right? And and that that's what I hate when it comes down to a lot of these things. Like people who are like, oh, I love the X-Men is because they're about like talking about woke stuff and like, you know, like it just so happens. It just coincides. Like yeah. it's sort of like it just became part of the message. It wasn't the original messaging. So um, yeah. I, I don't know. So from a person who has never watched the X-Men and stuff like that, like how do you feel about, about all of this? Yeah, or, like, it's, not, it's a cartoon. It's not. It's not surprising that they're using it to weaponize or use it as a platform to say, oh, they were work. It was already work to begin with because it's the exact same thing when we were covering Fallout, the Fallout TV mm -hmm. show. It's like we got so many comments. Oh, Fallout is already woke. Then when I when I asked them, can you give incidents? Like it's like um, he says, oh, this character was a lesbian. Oh, this character because it was bi. Oh, because at the start of the at the start of the game, you were led by a female character. It it's so shallow. It's like it's come to the point that um, what upsets me more is not the woke people, but it's more actually the a, the anti woke people. It's the people who uh, what do you call this? Like they feel like they opened their woke third eye, but instead of dead people, it's like I see woke people. It's like it's it's so annoying, man. It's incredibly frustrating. It's like it's the kind of people like when you see, oh, it's a pink toothbrush. This toothbrush is so woke, man. It promotes intersectional feminism and identity pop. They they the thing with a woke person is they think uh they're actually just plain stupid. If it's an anti-woke person, it's like it's stupid people that think they are smart. It's it's starting to get so annoying that uh it just serves to diminish the or it serves to add an extra layer of complication to the conversation when it doesn't have to be. It's like it's like, yeah, I, I get what uh what Eric was saying, even though I don't really have that much ref um knowledge with X-Men. But I've seen what the what's happened to Fallout because ten years ago we never had this conversation with oh Fallout is already woke you just didn't realize it no okay, fall, Fallout in the games it wasn't it wasn't intended to be woke it never did there's like Eric July said there's a lot of more nuances to it than just interpreting it inter having that interpretation as it being woke but yeah uh. Yeah, it's frustrating. It's only gonna get worse because they, they're gonna find these franchises that they can they can pick and say, Oh, look, look, this franchise, this well known franchise, it's woke. It it was you just you guys just never realized it. So that's probably one of their shall we say bet better arguments because they're weaponizing it. But in actuality, it's still the same thing. It's just that you just need you need you need to tackle it with more nuance just to uh see their lies point on point. Yeah, they deleted Rogue's booty. Yeah, Sleepy Joe. Yeah, yeah, Sleepy Joe in the chat. <laughs> so this one here is the. So this is this is like one of the episodes when Apocalypse showed up, right? 
<clears throat> basically apocalypse be coming for that ass right <laughs> <laughs> but but uh this is sort of how it is right now it's basically just it's sort of like flat of course this is this, this is animation it could be done like in small scale and stuff like that but how do you how, how do you feel about um rogue's booty <laughs> yeah downgrade for sure and it's gonna continue as long as the people in disney are where they are yeah. at oh sad yeah. But, but yeah, at least we, we got Stellar Blade coming up. At least that's the upside. <laughs> Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.